And I remember a tweet that somebody was saying, like, you know, either they had talked to like their little brother or little cousin or something like that, you know, and they're like, so what do you think about this like little Nas X video, like turning people gay, you know, and the kid was like, wait, so we watched the little Nas X video and we turn gay. Does that mean that we go watch wet ass pussy and we turn straight? This is stupid. Like this mm-hmm. kid just got I love it. This. Like, <laughs> boom. It was just so insightful. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connecting the Dots. I'm Ignacio Rivera, your host, and I am here with... Hi, I'm Jules Purnell. I am a sexuality educator. I am a restorative justice practitioner. I am a queer person, trans person, multiracial person, and kinky person. I think that's about all of the important things here. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Very good, very good. And Jules <laughs> and I have known each other for quite some time now, right? It's been a long time since we've seen each other. So mm-hmm. thank you for you know um, agreeing to do this with me. And it's really, really nice to see you. Um, so today we are going to do a Connecting the Dots on a song. And this song is Montero. And it's also known as Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. Uh, this is a part of our uh, Young People and Youth Edition. And Lil Nas X is in his early 20s, I think. Um, and is a phenomenal, phenomenal Black, young, queer rapper who I feel is changing the landscape of um, hip hop uh, and is out, like totally out as a gay person. So it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see um, his performances are so amazing. So I want to start off and ask you, um, why did you want to choose uh, this particular song or, or just this piece of media? Because um, I often, I think I've only done two, maybe one or two other uh, songs and mostly people pick movies and documentaries to, you know, to look into. But I think songs are really, really strong and important. So tell me why you picked this one and what you want to highlight from this song. There's so many reasons. So I'm a, a child of the 90s and I remember really beautiful high production music videos being such a thing. And that's not as popular these days. Although there's a lot mm-hmm. of people still doing really beautiful stuff. But when I saw this, it just blew me out of the water. It's so incredibly gorgeous. It's just the aesthetics you can't mess with. Yeah. Um, but also the importance of the message is just so salient for right now. Um, I also reached out to a group of young people that I work really closely with and I asked them what's something that's really important right now to to young queer people like what are folks listening to watching things like that. Um, And one of my peer educators just sent me back this like three paragraph long screed about why she loved this particular video and why it was so important and I was like Mm. great thank you noted like we'll we'll go with that then. (laughs) So it was great. Partly my own exposure, just like real appreciation for this piece of media and also the confirmation that even though it's been a few months like this is still on people's minds. Yeah, definitely. I think about this video a lot and I purposely did not um, read, although I know that there were much, much, much comment on this video. But the only thing I heard of that I allowed myself to listen to was that people were upset, like people were in an uproar, similarly to the video that um, um, came out with a wop, like, you know, wet mm-hmm. ass pussy. And then it was like, oh my God, this is horrible. And so I, we did a connecting dots on that. And so, you know, the uproar, the the thing that people were really upset about, I could only guess that it had to do with the devil, mm-hmm. like religion, right? You know, like queerness and religion. But what do you think uh, people were really upset mm-hmm. about? And what, like, why would someone be upset about this video? <laughs> It's funny you should mention WAP because I actually have a student who does a podcast and she had me come on to talk about, we did a close read of that video and discussed it. Um, And so these two pieces of media coming out right now feel so important because I think that really what people are reacting negatively to is this idea that women and queer people have an ability to speak to their sexuality in a way that they have not been given the vehicle to do specifically in this piece of media. So I'm thinking about like the the backlash and the uproar to this video and to WAP. And then I'm also thinking about like, you know, Billy Idol's, uh, you know, Rock the Cradle and Tawny mm-hmm. Katane being like spread out on top of a car, you know, and mm-hmm. all these other like hip hop videos with like, you know, dancing girls and stuff throughout time. And those have kind of, I mean, they've obviously gotten some backlash, but not yeah. this, this is destroying America, <laughs> you know, right. level of backlash. This is a sign of like degeneracy. It's like we've been seeing sexuality in music videos for a hell of a long time. Right. You know, this is nothing all that new. 
And one of the things that I teach in my classes as well is that anytime there's been any advance in technology or media, we almost immediately use it to make images about sex or, you know, songs like that's almost like one of the first things we do from cave mm -hmm. paintings up until now, like that's <laughs> always what we've been doing. So it's, it's nothing new. Um, but I do right. think that you're right that the, the religion piece in there, um, really does have something to do with it. And it's also kind of funny. Lil Nas X is like, amazing at like tweet clapbacks um and mm -hmm. one of the things he said is you know everyone tells gays to go to hell but then get mad when we're there you know <laughs> he's like i uh, went to hell it's what you told me to do <laughs> exactly exactly this is what I, okay so let's let's talk about some of the pieces of the video itself so one for one in the video he plays every single character yes. right so that was very very interesting and i definitely want to talk about the hell piece because that's like so key here mm -hmm. but like um why do you think that he played all the characters. Like I have an idea in my head. I was like, huh. Um, and so I wanted to answer that right away, but I'll ask you first if you had any uh, any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think part of it may have just been out of necessity because this was made during quarantine. So I think part of yeah. it was just like for safety exposure reasons, perhaps that was a motivator. Um, and I think that it was a really smart use of CGI, you know, in that way. We can create a world if we're kind of cloistered in and we can't really go out somewhere, we can like create mm this this inner representation of this world but i also CGI. think that it really yeah it's all uh, computer generated images thank you i had no idea but yeah yeah <laughs> that was my little tech nerd <laughs> moment sorry <laughs> um but yeah so i i also and the same thing for for wet ass pussy that's all computer generated images i believe it's almost all um computer generated ah, um okay. and it's it's just again the two of them i think in the whole video but i also think that this speaks to um, Lil Nas X, I know with this particular song, he has said that this is like kind of like a, a reckoning or a love letter to like his his younger self. And so I think yes, that all of thought. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think all of the characters being played by him, it has to do with these like different parts of himself kind of like ugh, coming to terms with this. So I think about like, in the beginning, he's like sitting under the tree and then the snake who is also him comes out and is like kind of chasing him, you know, and it's like this mm -hmm. thing about yourself, you're trying to ignore. I've got news for you. Like, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, I like this idea about like um, him playing all the characters because it's it's a, it's a part of him in some different way, like how we sometimes hate ourselves yes. or how we love ourselves or how we're struggling with this thing. So he's like condemning himself and loving himself all at the same time, like all of these. And I didn't even think about the, the, the COVID uh, aspect of the video. I kept thinking, oh, this was so smart in the way that he's playing all the characters, especially with the with the backlash around it that um there is no um other person that they can say uh that he was like like he was trying to do something with a particular person or a gender mm -hmm. it's all him he's doing yes. this with himself um, so it's quite interesting in that aspect as to how people speak about it um uh let's talk about the hell piece i i mm -hmm. the the piece about when he gets on the, the the dance pole and slides all the way down to hell, I love it. Yes. I love it. What it what imagery and like um and so like uh yeah it's like like you said like people are always saying go to hell you're going yeah. to hell basically this is where you're going to be yes. and him sliding down there is like it's almost an acceptance of this is my queerness. I'm accepting it. And if this is where I'm going, then I'm going down, honey. I'm just, I'm, I'm loving it. And I'm going to have some fucking fun down here. Yes. Um, but in the end, what does he do to the devil? Yeah. Cracks, you know, cracks his neck, but the, the, the lap dance, the lap dance was mm -hmm. amazing. I loved it. Like, I know, I'm sure that that was the exact time where people were like, this is <laughs> so messed up like this is blasphemous or something but what do you think that um that imagery of him sliding down getting on top of the devil and giving him a lap dance and then killing him what do you think that represented this whole video the attention to detail is so meticulous and it's so referential to so many mythologies from the western world um and if i'm not mistaken i believe he said that he grew up christian so this is also like his you know, cultural background right. that he's critiquing. He's saying like, ha, right. this is like a story I was told. Let me flip the script a little bit. Um, so I think mm -hmm. it's immediately before he starts going down the pole, it's like this angel to a devil sort of transformation, right. which is the fall of Lucifer. You know, Lucifer yes. was yes. An, an angel. And yeah. so sliding down and then, you know, I think that people are big mad about it because once he got to hell, he's having fun. It's like go to hell and mm -hmm. suffer is sort of the implication. He's like, I'm going to go to hell, but it's going to be a party. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I love that the devil's like such a stoic top too. Like the devil's just sitting, there, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Grinding all of, over him. It's such a great representation of too, like we're killing this like really stoic, joyless idea of what like sin is. Like I'm gonna, mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna crack this neck and then I'm gonna put on the horns. And there's that moment of pleasure when he does it. And he's like, Ooh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like everything about it's just so well done. When you see the, like when he cracks the neck and then takes the horns and put it on, it's like, do you think that that is that uh, manifestation of him at that point is a, I don't know, a, a middle ground between pure and evil, right? Because it's dark eyes, but he has the wings and then he mm -hmm. has the horns. So it's almost like this, uh, this uh, place, this gray area, or this place where you find peace, where you're not completely mm -hmm. an angel, but you're not completely going to hell or mm -hmm. evil. And I think that's what I kind of got out of it, but it could mean something. I'm sure that there are many, many meanings and representations to this video. And you're right, the, the visual of it was so gorgeous. I mean, so gorgeous. And, um, and the, just the, the colors and each, um, each section, each scene, like starting in the Garden of Eden, you know, and it is, it is a biblical story starting in the Garden of Eden and ending in hell, you mm -hmm. know, which is very, very interesting. Um, I wanted to see if, are there any lyrics in this, uh, in the song? Cause I, I'm looking at the lyrics right now to try to see, are there any lyrics in the song that caught your attention or I don't know, was a uh, poetic in a way that um, you really have to read between the lines to understand it. There's a lot of the lyrical content that's really rich, but the one thing that I really, when I first saw it, um, this isn't necessarily the lyrics of the song, but it's, it's, it's visual text that's in the video. There's like a snapshot for just a couple of frames of like a tree that has some Greek lettering on it. And I was oh, like, yeah. that's gotta be something, right? Like there's no <laughs> reason for them to just show that without it being something. So that actually comes from Plato's symposium. And mm -hmm. what that translates into is after the division of two parts of man, each desiring his other half. And it comes from this notion that people all started out as being two being stuck together and then were separated and we we're always looking for our other half. And in that original story, it was two men were joined, two women were joined, or like a man and woman were joined. And when they're split, then they're each looking for the other half. So that mm -hmm. implies this history of acknowledging that like queerness is natural and is something that is a natural state right. of being. And like us right. looking for other halves, no matter what our sexual orientation is, like it's all the same journey. So like that mm -hmm. to me was really riveting and spoke to oh. just the real beauty and the story of the rest of the song and the, the video itself too. Mm. This is what I like about that video so much because you're right. When I saw those little um, letterings, I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Because it, it has to mean something. And so there's just like so many little gems like put in there. Like, I think this is one of those videos that you could watch over and over and over and still see something that you might not have seen before or a different kind of a meaning for what was there. It's so like, it really is a very, very thought provoking and thoughtful um, you know, video and song, like it really has some intense, deep, you know, emotional and political context to it that um, religious context, like so many things that it's not at at first glance, uh, someone who may not know anything about queerness or anything will look at it and can see and, and might make an assumption that this is just a despicable video about a gay person <laughs> dancing on the devil, right? But if you really, if you really see the story, if you really look at it and really like take it in, you see that there's something so much deeper in this video. It's not about the the dancing, although it's gorgeous, you know, and it's not about the the male on male energy, which is gorgeous, which we never mm -hmm. see. And also that he is so smart because he's doing the male on male energy, but it's with himself, yes. right? It is this himself thing. Um, just so smart because it's so difficult for people, even if it was because of, um, you know, um, coronavirus and stuff, but um, it is just so difficult for people in general to see masculine people kissing, showing any kind of affection or sexual mm -hmm. energy towards each other. And here he's doing it very successfully with himself. So it's like, how do you even talk about that, right? Like, I think he put a, um, he, he almost put like a little block on people trying to comment on possibly the sexual energy, but it's, 
it's more poetic it's more um it's more layered yeah, than that it's that. it's so great to see too because there's all of these different boundaries and barriers that are being broken because you know old town road was the other song of his that was the uh -huh. really big breakthrough hit yes. before and then you yes. know he's kind of like all right now check this out right like you had this one idea about who i am and what i'm doing and then there's this other one so and, yes. and it's also just really i think amazing to see a you know gay black young man like not only being you know in this this really public way in hip-hop but also being like yeah and i also had like a country hit you know surprise yeah. <laughs> like a very yeah. versatile artist like such a young yeah. self-possessed versatile artist it's really incredible to see it's just so um beautiful you know mm -hmm. i don't even know what else to say it's it's beautiful to see him taking this creative artistic and political stance um that really is um, fostering a lot of conversations. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's such an incredibly vulnerable song and video. It's really, it's incredibly brave in that, like, this is tremendously personal. This is a tremendously mm -hmm. personal piece of, I mean, he is, you know, said before that this is basically a song to his younger self. And it's, it's a little bit heartbreaking to know that like, he is very young still, right? Like he's in his early twenties, mm -hmm. but like, this is a letter or, you know, a song to his like 14 year old self. That's not that long ago. So it also yeah. is heartbreaking on the one hand to know that of course the landscape is, is very different. And I have a, a seven year old and a 10 year old and the way that they um, and their friends talk about queerness is so much more evolved and the, the consciousness around it is so much more evolved than when I was their age. But it's still like it's heartbreaking to know that like my students and the other folks that are still young still are dealing with these issues of the different isms, you know, the homophobia, transphobia, you know, racism, all these different things. So it's it's that to me is the thing that's so impressive is like this is tremendously deeply personal and it's it's yeah. you know what the stakes are like you know that like you're gonna get flamed <laughs> all yeah, over the yeah, internet yeah. for this one and you're still like nope this is really important to put out there and he has said that this yeah. is for young people today to know that like it's okay to be who we are like it's okay to be this person and you don't have mm -hmm. to be afraid of it and one thing i really when you were talking about the like femme queer sexuality that's present there there's so much eye contact in the video that he's making like he's he's letting mm -hmm. you know like this you have to look at me you can't not yeah. look at this you have to look at me being sexual you have to look at me being sexy and you have to deal yeah. with your own desire around that like this is on yeah. you now <laughs> yeah ah uh, so smart i just keep thinking so smart so smart so yes. wonderful so visionary yeah so visionary and um i think somebody had told me is it correct that uh lil nas x last name is montero i believe so yeah this is his given name right. so this is like okay. a, literally a song about and to himself exactly you know like yeah. it's like montero like yes this is about him so this is the part that i wanted to uh, understand a little more uh about that because when i heard that part it spoke to me about like the certain well the, the certain uncertainty right like there is a certain uncertainty in being that publicly in the eye and still having to come to terms with these things and so i do think that for a lot of us maybe who are trying to deal with self-acceptance or deal with self-love like even if you mm -hmm. don't mean it like even if you're not 100 percent there yet like let's let's try to get that let's try to get to a place of self-acceptance or self-love and so much of the the visual again like pulling us back is all about like him interacting with his own body in a way that either is like sexual or like dismissive you know all these different mm -hmm. ways so i think that there's this real tension here between do do we like really love ourselves are we still trying to sort through the complication of it all um are we still rejecting part of ourselves based on cultural messages about like you do this stuff but you keep it under wraps we don't talk about mm -hmm. it i wonder if that's maybe part of what that Lyrical content is speaking to. Oh, I know that the the call me by your name it does reference another piece of media that I haven't seen that is about mm. queer love. So I I know that it's it's somewhat referential to that, um, but also I think that so many of us like when we are looking for acceptance, like we want to be told that we're loved, even if we don't think the other person means it, you know. So maybe it's this piece of like. I I know that I need to hear it, even if it's not true. I just want to, I want someone to say it to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So even if I can't accept this part of myself, I want to at least hear it because it's something that I really need. So I almost wondered yeah. if that was part of it too. Mm -hmm. I think like, how could we use this piece of media 
to have some really awesome conversations um, with young people, you know, and I think my first instinct is just asking mm -hmm. young people what they think about the video without yeah. making any commentary whatsoever. I think that's the first step always, especially when there's a generational gap, you might not understand it. You know, um, maybe the first instinct is, you know, back in my day, we would never see that, which is a fact, yes. Right. And, right. you know, so what, how do, what do you take out of that? I think to me, that's always the first step, you know, like asking, why don't you interpret that for me? What did you get out of it? Yeah, I think that that's brilliant. I always think that the, the more open-ended questions you can give young people, the better so that you're not influencing. That's something I struggle a lot with as an educator because mm -hmm. I know that I have my biases. I know that I do. I always try to be very clear about like, this is what's factual and here's just my opinion, right? Like, this is mm -hmm. my take on this thing. And I, like I said, I, I, I have younger kids and I was even, you know, when I was watching this before in preparation for this, I had the door wide open, you know, if they wanted to come in and talk about it yeah. or ask me questions, like I would be fine with that because, yeah. you know, again, I watched all kinds of raunchy stuff on TV that was so cis heteronormative. It was just inundating my brain constantly, you know? So I'm like, this is like a little nice salve for that. You know, it's like, yeah. if, if you're gonna watch some stuff all day long, that is, you know, um, really pushing a certain narrative of heteronormativity. Like, mm -hmm. I'm okay with this being a little bit of a palate cleanser and a course correction because it is images of gay love, but it's really images of self love and self acceptance yeah. and grappling yeah. with these different parts of ourselves and getting them to come together on some understanding of our own inherent worth and value. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. this is a great video. Like, I would happily yeah. show this to young folks and say, like, what do you yeah. think about this? Or mm -hmm. like, even if um, Sometimes I'll show images like in one of my classes and I'll say, or, you know, I, I oftentimes will choose images of bodies that we don't normally think of as sexy that like society has mm -hmm. told us are not sexy, like, you know, right. And then I'll ask, like, you know, how did it feel to watch this? Did this change your understandings of like what sexy is? Did it feel uncomfortable? Right. Like, why do you think that that was uncomfortable? So maybe exactly. questions like that would be valuable when viewing this piece of, it, of media as well. Yeah. I constantly say lots of question asking um, and even storytelling, because mm. even the even the story around when I was younger, we would yes. never see videos like this is a valid right. conversation without judgment. Right. Correct. So it's just sharing the differences of how things have changed and what has changed and why they have changed could be a great intergenerational conversation. Right. Not not judgy, but just saying these are the facts back then. This is what we had and this is how we talked about it. And now look at what you have. What do you think? How do you think that has changed? You yes. know, um, um, also, it, I just thought back when you were talking uh, about um, uh, people, you know, judging and stuff. I, I, I thought back on the scene in the video where, um, you know, it looks like he's in a court, you know, with the mm -hmm. uh, yes. handcuffs. And so in that section, he is the judge, jury and everything. But it's also in us because yes. we don't live in a vacuum. We take all that shit in and it can really spew out of us. So. Yeah, I think it speaks to that like internal judgment. And it was interesting too, in that particular scene, all of the ones who are being really judgy were kind of done up like drag figures. And there's like, you know, them fanning themselves and stuff like that. And they're very um, covered. So they're mm -hmm. very covered and they're all wearing blue. And then he comes yes. in and is less covered and is wearing pink. And so he's the one that's seen as like, you're the, the problematic figure here right. because like right. you're, you're more femme coded and you're a little sexier mm -hmm. looking. And so like, you know, why can't she be yeah. like all, you know, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. done up in yeah. this like blue buttoned up way like the rest of us are. So I thought that was really yeah. interesting too. Yeah. And I saw the blue as masculine, but also I saw it as police, you know, the oh, color yeah. of the police that's blue, yeah. you know, like um, today's music. Um, uh, is a wonderful tool to use as um, a teaching, um, you know, a teaching uh, modality for young people, because like you're listening to music all day long, you connect to it, it changes your energy and vibration, you know, so it's like a wonderful um, opportunity to just ask questions. And I think this one right here, I would suggest a lot of adults just listen mm -hmm. to what pe young people have to say about this. Yeah. And how the landscape of uh, young people's and young adult sexuality and access to that has shifted significantly. Mm -hmm. um, and how this is, you know, um, and continuing it, this, this pushes it in a different way, right? Because I often say we live in a society that's hypersexual that mm -hmm. doesn't allow us to talk about our human sexuality. That yes. is so scary, right? And so um, here, 
is almost like a together of this is our human sexuality um, and this is um, hypersexuality too. I'm, we're just clashing all of this shit because it doesn't make sense how we 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 do live in a hypersexual society, but talking about the 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 facts of our human progression, our sexual progression, our fluidity is like no. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great um, media piece to really explore. Um, really explore and not and this when I say explore and talk about this I want to be clear this is not just about talking to kids who may be gay or trans or anything this I think conversation and video and everything has to be for everyone to talk about masculinity even great conversation about masculinity like what is it what 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 is masculinity and what is um scary about what you see there as a cis man in the world. Those are great right. conversations. Like, why does that make you afraid? Yes. Why do you think some men automatically want to hurt, physically mm -hmm. violate someone who is like that? These are great questions. Like yes. that, that is a great um, conversation about reducing or ending or preventing violence because people don't have these, the tools to even talk about those feelings, right? right. It's like something feels different in me. Maybe they're excited by it. Maybe they um, hit up against what their parents told them when they were younger, like that's wrong, but then you like the video. It's mm. confusing, you know? So how do you talk about these things without being judged, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. I think when it comes around, this is about fear and secrecy, fear and secrecy. Yes. Um, so here, Lil Nas X is like, no secrecy, here it is. <laughs> we're not here doing that. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's yes, such a good um, point. It's such a good point. And I was also thinking too about, I, I hope, my hope is that by stuff like this becoming more part of the popular media too, that exactly what you're saying, not just queer and trans folks seeing this, but everyone, you know, everybody seeing this stuff, it will become mm -hmm. a little bit more normalized. Cool. So like, <laughs> you know, when young people also are given the tools to have those conversations, like they're, they're so brilliant and we can learn so much. Like I learn yeah. so much every day from young yeah. people, from my students, from my kids. Like if, if we stop thinking that we have all the answers, all the and answers. Actually like, yes. And if we soften around our edges and if we yeah. are able to say like, this was different from back in my day, maybe back in my day wasn't great. Like maybe there's a yeah. reason why this is so shocking to people my age. And it's not that shocking to younger people. Let's learn from them about why, <laughs> like right. they're okay with right. this. And we were so freaked out, like why, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and just tune in to what you're, Kids are looking at and listening to, even if you don't agree, if you hate it 100%, doesn't matter. If they're consuming it, it's a conversation to be had. The part is create those inroads for conversation. You know, don't um, shame your child, like, oh, you're too young to see that. Or, you know, you know, get curious. Say like, oh, like, what did you think when you saw that? How did it make you feel? Like, instead of really uh, clamping down and getting really stringent, exactly what you were saying, like, just keep mm -hmm. those lines of dialogue open. And one way to do that is by using these kinds of things as a conversation starter. So yeah, absolutely. I think that mm -hmm. everybody should be uh, with their young folks in their lives, just open to having these conversations on an ongoing basis. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jules. Sure, but if folks want to reach out to me, uh, julesmpurnell.com is my website. Um, folks can find ways to contact me there, learn more about my work. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for having me on. It's always great mm -hmm. to get to see you, even when we are ships mm -hmm. passing in the night for many years. It's always yes. great to get to be in conversation with you. Yes, thank you so much. This was great. This was a yes. great conversation. So thank you, everyone, for checking in with Connecting the Dots, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care.